thank you very much. This has been exciting preparing for this event and bringing my passion for the arts to you too. The support I've had with Bill Robinson has been invaluable. I, we're, we actually have a PowerPoint, like I was part of a big corporate thingy. I'm so pleased. So there was a paper that, a handout, I did a couple dozen for you if you want. You know, have you ever said to someone who said, let's paint, let's do some drawing. I can't draw a straight line. I never could draw a straight line. Don't think of me. Well, on the back of that sheet is a poem by a poet laureate, U.S. poet laureate Billy Collins, titled Horizon. You can use a brush of a Japanese monk or a pencil stub from a racetrack. As long as you draw the line one third the way up from the bottom of the page, the effect is the same. The world suddenly is divided into its elemental realms. One line. A moment ago, there was only a piece of paper. Now there's earth, sky, or sky and sea. You were sitting alone in a small room. Now you're walking in the heat of a vast desert or standing on a winter beach, watching the light on the water, light in the air. One line. Doesn't even have to be straight. It could be a little waves. So my excitement about showing you a kind of a process of getting from the magnificent paintings of the Renaissance and the, you know, seeing Mona Lisa and then going into the Impressionists, all of those you're seeing what the artist wants you to see and it represents something. But uh, with my work, sometimes I'm skipping, not quite to Jackson Pollock, you know, he took all the paint cans and dribbled them and dribbled them, dribbled them, and it looks good when you're really close up to one. You begin to see the depth of what he was doing. But that's another subject. You know, when you start to look at abstract painting, I have a couple of mine here that I'm going to talk about. Oh, my grandson could do that. In fact, I saw him the other day. He was a, he could do an abstract. Well, maybe he could. So you just keep encouraging him. My enjoyment of making art, I do watercolor. Um, I love the texture and the viscosity, the thickness of acrylics, which is what keeps a lot of people doing oil paint. And oil painting is still very much alive and well. But people are being more aware that there is some toxicity to the oil painting medium and the ways that it's, it's done. So some people are moving away from it. So the manufacturers are doing a wonderful job. They're making the acrylics dry slower, so it's more like oil paint. There's oil paint companies that are making oil paint that are water soluble. So you can paint that way. All kinds of ways to spend our art money over and over. So the next one, the, um, I think that we can, I've been kind of talking around that one, Bill. So the next one, next slide. So here I'm just showing briefly when you want to be part of the art talk, they'll talk about, oh, what is the media? What is the medium? That's whatever was you made the painting with. The watercolor is water media. Acrylic is also water-based media. And then the good thing about acrylic is it's really a plastic glue. And you can stick things together. 
and do collage. And there is a f dozens of ways of adding texture. The companies have come up with medium that's got granite in it, glass balls in it, pumice to make it rough and interesting. More fun to order. So I've, some of the mixed media will be on the slides. All right, this is where your group was so great. Next slide. This is an example of how I tried to get a concept that's in two dimensions, what three dimensions is. I did, it's a series that I did called Swing Dancing. I was inspired by what you presented. Sierra Renaissance, when you were meeting, we were all meeting there at Cameron Park Community Center, you were able to use like a side room to show documentaries. And there was a documentary about swing dancing. Well, that seemed kind of interesting. I went in, we spent about, it was about almost an hour, maybe a little longer. Anyone go to that yeah. one? Betty Ann, anyone else? In Maryland? These veterans of swing dancing were sharing their love of that kind of dance and the move and the music with the younger people. And it was really exciting to see. And I got to thinking, hmm, maybe I could do something. So this is an example of it. I didn't have it to bring with me. It's a little bit sharper in the edges, but you get the idea. There's a lot of music and sound going on in this. The next one, Bill. When I did this one, it's not really that big. It's only about this tall. Incidentally, when you see the size of a painting listed, the first number is usually the height. The second number is the width. It's, it's sort of a nice little trick to remember when you're seeing to have reference. So this isn't very big, but on it I tried a lot of different textures and collage things, and I wanted to show that to you. So I think we have a blow up of that, right, Bill? Thanks. So here you can see, though, there are stencils that I did on tissue paper and glued it to the painting. There's rough areas across the bottom. It's also an example of I was kind of getting upset, obsessed with the colors of blue and orange. And when you mix blue and orange together, particularly an ultramarine blue and a burnt sienna orangish brown, there are so many other colors you can pull from it. A wonderful gray and all kinds of exciting for me anyway, things. And the blues, but after all was said and done, I thought, you know, it kind of looks like a city street with the, the an impression that there are some buildings, impression of a wet street, which is something I want to tell you that's important. When you look at something like this, I'm sharing with you what I saw. You do not have to see anything in a painting. It can just be the joy of the color and the shapes and the marks, you can show the artist that you appreciate what they've done by responding to the, those things, the colors, the shapes, etc. You don't have to say, oh, I see a little dog on the corner. You don't, we're so geared to seeing things, you can't help yourself a lot of times but try to get past that and see. So let's go on. Next one. 
so this one is really a it's it really does push the abstractness because I had a wonderful vacation with my family and we were in Siena and has anyone been to the cathedral in Siena and you know how the stripes the way they put the tiles on the inside of the cathedral and outside it was just stripe after stripe well I started remembering the stripes and then I started remembering the color of the sun as it hit the tiles. So I created this combination of shapes and colors inspired by my trip to Siena. Now, if you walked into this room now and looked at that, you'd go, mm, I don't know what that is, you know. But that's where my inspiration came from. And I'm not asking you to find where the stripes are or where they aren't. I've lost my clip. I've got to fix it. So, um, I, so, so does anyone have a question at all about so far? Yes? Yes. Did you create all those colors on that print, on that picture with those colors? That's a good question as to whether I limited my color palette on that painting, which I didn't. It was kind of based on that, and then I'll add something else. Sometimes a bright color that isn't one of those to bring attention. So. Let's look at the next slide. This is a pr rather large piece. As you can see it's three feet tall and four feet wide. And um, it was kind of toward the end of COVID. And I was thinking, I just got to keep going. I want to keep doing things. And I started thinking again about one step at a time. And each of those squares, the ones kind of in the center are, I'm stepping, I'm stepping, I'm stepping. And I'm kind of feeling better about it with the little ones that go straight up. You know, I'm feeling lighter. I'm still stepping forward. I'm still wanting to do something the next day and the next day and the next day. Now again, if you had walked in here without me talking to you for a few minutes, you might wonder what the heck that's all about. Did any, were any of you able to go to one of Margaret Welty's classes from Los Rios and in Placerville? <laughs> um, she's a, a great art teacher, great with all the college students, and she even tolerated us older people. And she had a great class for a few years where in the summertime, it was, I don't know, it was four or six weeks, but she would arrange for transportation to galleries and museums. And one of the things she told us over and over, you're in a gallery, you've walked up to a, there's this painting and you look at it. What the heck were they thinking? This doesn't make sense at the spell. I don't understand it. Margaret's point is, give it a chance. Someone who was well-trained, well-schooled, well-educated, who curated that show and put that painting up there, saw something in it. What was it? So this is my thing to you about abstract painting. Always give it a chance. Maybe you're rushing to get through the gallery because you have to leave or something, but if you have the time, it's great to spend some time saying, well, I kind of see that. The other thing is that abstract art, while it looks like a whole bunch of stuff, does have to maintain 
all the classical rules for good painting. It has to have composition that makes sense. It has to, you have to be able to take your eye and go around and it's not so busy that you don't have a place to just kind of rest, which is like the upper left corner is kind of quieter and then it gets really serious in the center of the painting and then it gets kind of light and it goes off to some more steps to more things. But you have to have balanced composition, design, the color has to make sense. I probably would not have put a bright yellow green right in the middle of all this, but I did put a kind of a version of it in there to provide a little interest. So the next one, next. Now this is like I'm telling you, it doesn't always have to be something, but this is a story inspired. We all lived through it some years ago, the gray, red, stuffy air from all the wildfires. And I'm in my house in Cameron Park and I'm thinking, oh man, I wish I could do something. I can't do anything. Wish it would snow. It should really snow. Don't you think it should snow all those fires and just make it stop? So I painted a painting where I painted the fire kind of getting snuffed out by snow. And that's the painting right there that you can come and look at later. But sometimes there's a story around it. Mattia? Yep. That was a nice series of paintings that you did on that same theme too. I have one. Luckily, <laughs> luckily I have one. <laughs> Thank but, you. Yeah, so it wasn't just this one, it was a right. kind of Right, yeah, I just, that idea of the saying that word more than once. So then I got into thinking about how much I enjoy music. So if you will do the next one, there you are. I decided to do a series that was about tempo in music. I got out my musical uh, dictionary of music. And um, I found all these wonderful pianissimo, largo. I did one that was kind of largo, but all the time I was painting it, I felt so strong, deep. But this one is titled Presto, and it was in the Mother Lode show a couple of 2019 and bucket list I got best of show that was just I was so excited to get that it was so great and it was actually sold so there you are um, so I left a little bit of the best of show ribbon in the corner <laughs> just for that and then the next slide, where are you? Is the smaller, I had three large ones and this is a smaller one and I brought it with me and I named it Vives from that full of vive, viva, energy, light. And that's my blue and brown and all that and other colors too. But the idea was that you get started, there is some quiet, there's the blue, but it's pretty exciting to, to see the marks on it. That's what you could look at, where how the marks make a difference. And there's a lot of the abstract painters that tell you, they call it mark making, and they put crayon or ink or whatever and they'll go right across things and in the demonstration today I'm going to get brave and do a little that myself so the next one Bill so this is a painting I have now in my living room and I call it connection so here's another story about this the next slide Bill 
This is a close-up of that painting. Um, we are treated every day to the golden hills in our area with the oak trees on it. And it's just so beautiful to me. I just have wanted to paint it and repaint it. And then I was reading an article that talked about how the root systems, they've been able to document scientifically, how root systems interact even on those dry hills that we see every day. So I named this connection, and it's abstracted and loose with kind of chunks of color here and there, but it's all, I intended it all to be interconnected to satisfy, for me, I wanted to make a painting that reflected what I had read about the root system. Now, when you look at this, you don't go, oh, look at that root system. <laughs> but there's often a, a layer or two underneath of what is being painted that l informs how the artist wants to do it. Um, so there, the last one is an example just I took recently. This is the inspiration for what I'm going to be doing today. So why don't we take a little five, ten minute break, get yourself a cookie or a drink of water, and I'll get set up to do a demonstration. And any questions before we break? Yes. That, well, choosing what size canvas I want to do could be what I have a lot of and I want to use up. Or there are some people that are just, I hadn't been painting square. So I've got a bunch of square. That's a choice. But lately, I mean, I painted a little bit larger because I wanted you to see what I was doing. It's still, I don't know if it's big enough for you to see very carefully, but... Um, it's kind of at a whim, and it's kind of what I want to say. I might want something small, just a small thing. Does that help, Carol? It sounds like it depends on how you're feeling that day. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. What can I say? Yeah. Yes. Excuses do you draft up your, your plans before you do it on the larger piece? Or yeah, there's a, I get kind of an idea, and I try to discipline myself to do thumbnail sketches. So I know where the dark parts are going to be and the light parts are going to be. And then I may change it all while I'm doing it. But at least I start with an idea of how am I going to help the person looking at it go through the painting and not like keep going to the next painting, you know. Anything else? OK, let's do it. You could see well enough if you're sitting in the back. But this is um, what I've done in the last couple of days to show you what inspired me and all. And this, I got my paints mixed up. Well, I may need to do more. That'll be a thing I have to do. There it is, the oak trees on the golden hills. They're just, this is as reputation, representational is I usually like to do. I don't get much more detailed. And then I decided to make more abstracted this same thing. And I did this one. Oh. So this way, I was having a good time with the colors of green, with the so it's kind of hard for you to see over there. You're doing? This is all acrylic. And this will all dry. This not watercolor. And it dries impervious. I can take a brush now and just go on it. Nothing's going to happen. Because it's plastic. It's dried. It's waterproof. 
it's there forever. <laughs> but, but I don't do that around my house very often, but um, yeah, it's a technique. And the nice thing though, is if I wanted to paint all this out, I could. In fact, some of the artists that I got to know throughout the lockdown time, pandemic time, that's one of the things they love to do. They love to take a whole, they say, you know, I'm not sure why this isn't working. Here, let's just cover all this up. But they do it. And in fact, that's what Nancy was telling you about, that I do have another sheet of paper for those of you who it's kind of, you kind of think, well, abstract art, or, you know, my son-in-law kind of likes it, or whatever. YouTube was my savior all during the time when I wasn't going out and about. And these are some of the artists that teach that have YouTube channels, and if you want to investigate them, you can. They're, it's exciting, they're from all over. There's some a very, very interesting uh, artist from the UK with the same name as a Hollywood actress, but her name is Louise Fletcher, and she teaches abstract art. Um, there's, in Marin County, there's a Nicholas Wilton, who is a, he has a huge following. He has big thousands of people in classes and all, but he's kind of interesting, and he's one of those that says he's got big marks on his big paintings. Some of them are really huge. And then he'll just say, yeah, I don't really like all that, and take orange and cover half of it. Oh, that's much better, he'll say. And I'm sitting at the other side of my computer going, we'll see. I don't know if you're going to do that. But um, you can also find interesting artists on Instagram if you're into that by doing hashtag abstract art, hashtag acrylic art. So that's for you. So I am now going to take this and show you what I've started. I decided to do it on an actual canvas. I've primed it with a color so I don't start with absolute white. And some of the paintings that I've done over the years, I've done a collage, sometimes after but before, of music from sheets of music, because I, you know, music is vibration, everything's vibrating, energy is vibration, and it all kind of fits. Now this is between, I am not going to try to make a golden hill and oak trees. I'm going to just use those colors and those shapes just for fun. So I, the plan would be to spread paint like this, cover it a lot or a little, and I'm going to shift it a little bit this way because, and I'm going to try to keep you posted with what I'm thinking as I paint. So you know, why is she doing that? I use brushes, I use palette knives like this. This is metal and they can be very big or very tiny. And they, I discovered they are knives. I cut myself really bad one time. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta watch what you're doing. What is that you're using now? This is, they call it a wedge and it's, a, a resin or something, and the acrylic doesn't stick to it. If I forget and anything dries on it, I can scrape it off. And it keeps everything nice and smooth. It's better than a brush in a lot of ways.
I even have a bit of text right there. And from a distance, all it does is look like a pattern, a texture. So my idea was I'm using a yellow ochre for what it makes a difference, and yellow and lots of white. I go through lots of white, and I've discovered that I like using um, white gesso instead of white paint because gesso's got titanium white in it, and it does the job. And gesso is a base. I think it's ground up marble and stuff and it provides a subsurface both for oil painting as well as acrylic. But there's so much white in it that I just use it as a white um, base and a white color if I wanted to go back and say, no, 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 I really want it to be white right there. Oops, I got other colors on there. You have to always keep track. So it's another way of applying color with the palette knife, but that's white works pretty good. And it can, a good quality paint will cover other paint and it'll work fine. Right, and we're not even there yet on this one. Okay, she is asking about what am I going to do about composition in this painting? And my idea, which I'm not even kind of there yet, would be to have this side be very, very light, lighter colors, paler versions of green or blue or brown or gold or whatever, and then build, have some darker areas coming through here and something connecting it to be decided. So the colors to connect it would be a blend of the two? Or? I may connect them. I may blend them. That's why I don't just paint a tree as a tree. I want to be able to decide later whether I'm going to blend it or um, whatever. So this is a little bit more golden than I had planned, but I kind of like it. So she's asking, what thought had, I, what did I have in my mind when I put this, um, these pieces of sheet music on? I kind of just wanted it to be in the background, a little bit here, a little bit there, with the idea that if I didn't like it, I could cover it up. Good, thanks. It's amazing how there are very interesting paintings I've made at the very end when I have a bunch of stuff left on the palette. And I just make a painting with what's left. And because they were all kind of mixed there together, they blend color-wise. And it's just kind of a, OK, I don't have to make a big decision. I'm just going to do it. So I have to think positively about that, too. So I'm going to keep this side. Do the colors change as they dry? Or is that what it is? 
It's interesting about the way paint dries and if the colors stay the same. Because the question was, do the colors stay the same? With acrylic, they tend to dry a little bit darker. With watercolor, they try lighter. So you think you've put this beautiful shadow against a building and all of a sudden it dries and you go, where did it go? <laughs> right? Okay. The question about whether you would use gesso when you do a oil painting is very interesting because I don't think it works with oils as a white paint. Gesso is just the substrate, the bottom. Then you change after that's dry and everything you do has to be oil paint and gesso is by definition an acrylic based. There are rabbit glue substrates for oils. That's out of my wheelhouse right now. But it's a good connection that way, you know. I'm going to sort of take a look at making things a little bit cooler. That's another thing that the artist needs to do is to balance the warm and cool areas of the painting. So from your own <clears throat> everyday knowledge, you know that blues and most greens are kind of cool. There's some very cool yellow, yellow greens. But I don't think it would work real well if I just stuck light blue on it. I would have to gray it down a little, which I kind of did. Um, if I'd started to put A brighter blue, no, nope, I guess I did, there it is, that's not it, right, okay, so this is what I'm doing as far as the bluishness is concerned, and I think we can, I'm going to start putting some color down. So there's all kinds of tools we can use. And this one is absolutely wonderful. It's children's crayons called Stabilo. It's a big wooden crayon to the size for a kid's hand. And it's water soluble, so if I put um, a line on, and I put water on, it'll disappear. But just let's get something going here. Doesn't go on the wet paint as well as on the, where I haven't put paint on.
And if the paint was dry, I would go on with some pens that are, it's called a Posca pen. And I brought them, but I realize now I, the paint will probably be too wet and it'll just skip over it. So if I want a dark line, I'm gonna have to make it another way. What did you call those pens? The pens, P-O-S-C-A, Posca is the name of it. And it's actually an acrylic kind of paint. And it um, is, it's permanent and it goes over a lot of things. You can paint over all surfaces. Since I made such a deal about mixing brown and blue, I'll show you. This is a yellow, I mean a red brown, the burnt sienna, and it mixed with blue comes out to this rich color, which nobody sells in a tube. Oop. Covered the table. Now I can make some interesting shapes and different scoring like this while it's still wet. When you mix everything you're, as you go, it does take a little longer, as opposed to having every color come out of a tube. So I appreciate your patience with that. I assume that's a cop saving? No, it's just I want a color, and I want it now, and I don't want to have to look <laughs> through a, a bag of colors. But it does save money. What are you using as a palette? Pardon me? What are you using as a palette? What I'm using as a palette is a paper palette that can be thrown away. It, it comes out, this is the back of it. And then I can mix on it. And I also have a smaller one for auxiliary, <laughs> it's got a, actually has a thumb place in it. It's kind of cute. You're using gesso and a good quality acrylic as your blending, because I'm new to acrylics and I'm in a class right now and my acrylics are not good. Oh. And they dry up really fast. So I'm asking what you're using. Well, at this point, I did bring some plain clear gel, which is the same thing as acrylic without any pigment in it. But it's, so far, I'm not feeling like I need to spread things thinner. I want the maximum color because 
we don't have time to let me, you know, fiddle around too much more. We're getting on there. You guys are being patient. <laughs> yep. Is that, is that hypoacrylics? Is it, they're not out of a tube. Your acrylics aren't out of a tube. Well, are they high flow or are they just regular acrylics? They're just regular acrylics that are, um, it says fluid on these. No. See, that's the other thing. There's so much you could buy. There's very, very thick. There's a whole series. There's kind of thick. There's like this that you'll squeeze in, it'll come out. There's in a tube, which is a little bit thicker. And then there's very thin, called high flow, which comes out almost like ink. And it's for airbrush and all kinds of things. That's so exciting. What do you prefer? What is, what is your preference? Right now, what I'm using is what I love. I love it. So do you see where I'm trying here to put some gray in to kind of have a place where not that much is happening in the design, but I'm keeping the colors going, and I think it's time for this wedgy thing is really helpful. It doesn't mix real well, because you could see I'd get streaks, but. Virginia, isn't there also, um, getting back to the speed at which the acrylic dries, isn't there a retarder Yep. That you can buy to kind of slow down the drying. What the Cindy's suggesting is that one of the things I haven't talked about is how quick that acrylics dry, which is the total opposite from oil paints, which could take a couple of weeks to dry. But acrylics will dry quickly. In fact, they're starting to dry right here. And I brought a little squirt bottle to kind of slow that down, but it's part of the process. So what was your question more about the... There is not the spraying with water as you're working, but isn't there a retarder that you... Oh, yes. To, you know, of course, they invented it's something we could buy that retards the flow, that keeps it wet longer. And you can mix that in as you're going. They also have a whole series called open acrylics that have the retarder built in so it doesn't dry too quickly. Now, I've just mixed up a green because I wanted to put that in there, and I'm not a happy camper with it because it's too green. See what you think. Seems to me to be a bit bright, but maybe not. I needed to gray it down because I didn't want to, but you know, I could do something exciting and just put a brighter color, but see, I didn't mix it well enough. Wah humbug, let's see. Got a bright one here. See, it just squirts out nice, it's ready to go. This is what I meant about you could. Where is she going with this? It doesn't make sense. Oh. Okay, so in my mind, I have made a nice base 
so that there's a, like a, a floor to the painting. It doesn't have to stay that way, but. So I have almost entirely covered up the um, cult, the in talking and doing all this, I've almost entirely covered up the music, but it still peeks out. If you look closely, you'll know it's there. And I'm gonna work real hard not to do it anymore. Kind of. When I tried putting that, so I, some of the paint staying wet. It is, but it's only been a few minutes. Mm -hmm. In a half hour, it'll be drier. And I don't know if it'll be dry enough driving home that it won't smear on something, but sorry, I'm driving with my sister. <laughs> sorry for you. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> There are some things you only give a little bit of information at a time. <laughs> so, and I can also use water to thin it down a little. That's, water always works. So I'm going to try doing some. So, truth be told, you can see it better than I did. can. Let's see. Can you ask a question? Yes. When you introduce the blue on the left-hand side, are you going to incorporate bits of blue someplace else besides that? Well, this is kind of, she's saying, how can I incorporate colors from one side to the other side, in this case, the blue. Did I walk away from the video? A little bit. Sorry. It's all right. Um, I'm incorporating it a little bit here, and I'll work in it some more. But this is kind of an exciting time, because sometimes what people will do is do this. Sometimes the dark is at the top and everything lights underneath. And we have to finish it out this way. But I kind of think I like, what do you think of it? this one? So, okay, video, videographer, I'm back over here. And I'll stay here, I promise. Just a few more minutes, won't be too much longer. You have to get to know your paints. Some paints you put a little bit and it changes the whole thing. Other paints, like I wanted to introduce a little bit of the purple. Oh my God, it turned to this which is kind of nice in its way. And we want to get some of that blue. Shoot. So this I don't want to disappoint you, but I doubt this will be done at the end. 
of our time together today, but you can see how it starts. And I don't know about, see it's still a little wet. Can you see that? I put this across it and it smeared it <laughs> right in front of everybody. So after it dries, I could come back and put some, I may have to just do, 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 do. The nice thing also about acrylic is I just wiped everything off real easy. I didn't need turpentine or special anything like I would if it was a, you know, oil paint. I'm sorry. Was learning the colors using acrylic, did that learning transfer to oil and how they react? No, I don't think so. I think you have to study oil for oil, acrylic for acrylic. They may have the same name, but they may not interact with each other quite the same way. And, oops, I do want to, if I go this way, I want to make this lighter over here so I can do this. I didn't really cover it up completely, but I lightened it. Could be I'm going to start just mushing it too much. But the idea is, in my mind, I wanted to have a shape that was interesting. I wanted uh, some colors that were not your usual colors. And there's a lot to be done. I still want, like this shape here. Like this. I like that it comes around this way and goes up this way, maybe comes across here, like this. And um, I think I've gone about as far as I can go, as far as my brilliance quota is. <laughs> so thank you very much for being. And okay, Bill has a question. I just have one question. When do you do that? Now. Anytime? Anytime. Okay. I didn't know if you had to wait and then attach the beads with something. Well, or... that would probably be wiser to wait until it dries. But as far as progressing the, sh the painting itself, I could, once it's dry, would be the now. And I could put some other, I mean, Dress patterns torn up make interesting additions. Maps, oh, 3A maps torn up. A little bit of, you know, intersection or something. And it all kind of works together. And then when you have it in your house, you go, I see something a little different every time I look at it. And that's, a, that's wonderful. That's already happened to me. <laughs> Yes, Nancy. Which way do you, uh, will you like that painting? Is it I don't know. I don't know. I might look at that again. I hadn't planned to do it this way, but it might work. Everybody and, should come up and look at it closely because in doing that, it really has more detail than you can see. From okay, way. so, and Cindy has a question. I have a question. I know that you had an idea when you painted the snow on the fire series, but did this painting evolve in the same basic way? Okay. No, this was just going to be, I'm going to put a bunch of color and a bunch of lines and 
leave it at that. It had more of an idea in your head when you were painting the, the fire. Yeah, the fire. yeah, the yeah. Yeah, okay. And just one more. Um, when it's dry. Yes. And you decide you're not necessarily happy with a part of it, can you go back and add to it? Because I was under the impression from a different person that you can't, but I think you can't. There's no can't. <laughs> no, I mean, as far as acrylic, and if you've got a good, well pigmented gesso base, something you could cover the whole thing and start again. Thank you very much. Everyone's been very nice.